You guys have been asking for it, and today we're gonna do it. And we're gonna grab the ingredients and landers and head on to the kitchen studio. The premise is simple today. I want to show you how to do 10 of my favorite egg recipes that don't take much time to make. We could extend this further and do like 60 eggs by adding frittatas and like quiches and stuff like that, but that's not what we're trying to do today. We're really going to focus on simple preparations, things that you can make in 5 to 10 minutes except for one that's going to take you overnight. But everything else are things you can make for brunch or in breakfast in the morning and just kind of up your egg game. Let's get to it. The very first thing we're gonna do is the perfect soft boiled egg. Um, it's not rocket science, but usually you need to find what works for you. I like to take the egg out straight from the fridge and then put it into some already boiling water and keep it in there for about six minutes and 30 seconds. You then put it into an ice bath. Once it's in the ice bath, leave it there for about five minutes so that it's easier to kind of remove all the shells and use that water to just strip those shells off. Cut through it, you should have a beautiful soft boiled egg. Next preparation we're going to do is called a soy egg. You can call it a ramen egg, the momofuku egg. There's lots of different ways to do marinated style eggs, from the Chinese with the tea to the Japanese with their soy sauce and mirin. You take that same exact process for the soft boiled egg. You again put it in some cold water, strip it down, remove the shells. Then you make a mix of soy sauce, sugar, um, a little bit of mirin or some rice vinegar, a little bit of water. You leave the egg there for at least two hours, but I would highly recommend leaving it for more than 24 hours. The one we did today was about two hours. Perfect consistency on the yolk, as you see. Um, but the color hasn't really penetrated inside. So if you leave it longer, that color will really penetrate. Still delicious. Next, we're gonna talk about fried eggs. People have very different ways of doing fried eggs. The first one is a slow fry. This is what you'll kind of find, like, you know, when you have that egg emoji, this is basically it. So a little bit of butter in a pan, very, very, very slow heat place the cold egg in there and just let it kind of cook gently until the whites look glossy and are perfectly cooked and the, really the color of the yolk shines through. Personally, not my favorite. What I like to do in my eggs is add a little bit of oil so that way I get some crispy burnt part in the edges but still get a nice runny yolk in the middle. So all you have to do is put enough oil that it almost reaches where the yolk is so that the whites and the oils kind of blister and get crunchy. But you're really looking for that crunchy, perfect side. You're using a medium high heat fire here to get you the results that you're looking for. The fried and steamed egg, very simple. Do the same process as the fried egg, crispy fried egg. We want the edges, but we want the yolk to be slightly more cooked. A lot of people are kind of squeamish when it comes to runny yolks. So by adding a little bit of water and then covering with some sort of cover that fits or doesn't fit, um, the steam from the water, once it hits the pan, will help cook the top of the yolk, giving you kind of like a medium cooked, still a little runny egg yolk. Over easy is something that you'll have in all the diners across the US. You can ask for over easy medium, over easy, over medium, over easy hard. Uh, there's lots of different ways to cook that. It just basically means that you're flipping the egg yolk onto the pan side. So the most important thing here for me as I've done it in the past is to make sure that the white is almost there so that way the yolk you know is really set and attached to the white and then you can flip it and you leave it there for literally two seconds just to get that beautiful kind of white coating when you flip it over again. Your yolk here is still beautiful and runny. Everyone loves scrambled eggs. Everyone has a different way to make it. I personally don't add milk, cream, or anything like that. The creaminess for me comes with the movement of the pan and the butter that I add. So I add a lot of butter, I break the eggs in a bowl, mix those eggs together. I don't add anything at this point. You then put it on a very, very low heat fire with the butter and you mix, 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 mix until you get to the consistency where you think it's almost done. Don't wait till it's done or else it'll be overcooked. So when you think it's almost done, Take it off the fire, let it rest for about 10 seconds, and then transfer it to a plate. That way your scrambled eggs will be super creamy and still a little runny. Deviled eggs are something that I grew up with in France. We call them eau mimosa. Um, one of my earliest food memories were these kinds of eggs. Uh, you can make them very complicated by adding cheese and stuff, or you can make it very simple like what we're gonna do today. 
So all you need is a hard boiled egg that's eight minutes in uh, boiling water. You can then put it in a cold bath just to help you kind of peel it much easier. You split it in two, carefully remove the cooked yolk. The yolk you will then add to a little bit of mustard and some mayonnaise, crush it together, add some salt and some pepper if you want to. Get it nice and smooth, or you can even leave it coarse if you want, then transfer that mixture back onto the egg white and you've got a perfect umimuza. Creamy, beautiful, tasty, simple, all you need. This will be our most Instagram friendly egg. Does it do much in terms of flavor? No. Does it do much in terms of your sex life? Yes. Um, if you make this for anyone that you're attracted to, they'll, love you. they'll probably love you forever. All you gotta do is take a couple of egg whites, beat them until some soft peaks form. You can do that by hand, which is quite difficult and quite tiring, but you can also do it um, in a mixer. You then take the egg yolks that you have separated, put that in a little bowl that's oiled so it'll be easy to kind of slip back into the egg whites. Those egg whites you then put into a baking sheet, make a little dimple in the middle, place it in the oven at 350 Fahrenheit, so leave it there for about six to eight minutes until you see some sort of browning happening. Take it out, place the egg yolks back in, then that goes back into the oven for about three minutes. When it comes out, it's just kind of like this beautiful fluffy mess that's just absolutely a delight to look at. Finally, an omelet. They say every good cook needs to learn how to make a proper omelet. There are tons of different ways to do it. Honestly, at the end of the day, it comes down to how pretty you want it to be. Like you, if you look at Jacques Pépin's omelet, like one of the OG French cooks in the world, it is probably one of the most difficult things to nail properly every time. And it just looks like there's no closures, there's no flaps. It's just one perfect log of egg um, and it looks magical. But here I'm gonna show you how to do just a beautiful, quick cheese omelet. All you gotta do is take three eggs, beat those a little bit until you see a light little froth happening, some bubbles here and there. At this point, you add some cheese. You don't really need to season it further because the cheese already has some saltiness to it. You take a pan, a little bit of butter, you place your egg and cheese mixture into the pan, you use your whisk to really go to town with it. What you're really looking to do here is to cook everything in the pan adequately at the same temperature as much as possible. That way you can have a perfect little crust forming, but at the same time have something that's cooked in the middle, but not overcooked. And that's why it's key to just keep whisking, whisking, whisking. When you're almost there, keep taking it off, putting it back on, putting it off, putting it back on. That way you can manage the temperature better. Once you have kind of the consistency that you're happy with, then you start flipping it a little bit, giving it a little love tap in the butt. Um, no one, no one should say that ever. <laughs> little love tap in the butt, I'm gonna keep saying it. Um, so you can start moving the egg around into your pan and then you start flipping it slowly on one side, one side, one side. So that way when you actually put it on the plate, it just looks like a beautiful little thing that's put together dandily and it's just nice and inviting and will make you hungry. So that's the consistency you get. Fluffy, not overcooked, nice and cheesy.